It'll calm me down. Where's Romack? Oh, it's the funeral parlor, Chief. Now, you say you never saw this man before? Never, Mr. Smith. And I've never been in a police station either. Never in all my life. Well, don't let us scare you, ma'am. We just want to know how it all happened. Well, I was coming home from visiting Miss Manchin, and I, I took a shortcut through the alley. This man appeared out of the dark and asked me to have a drink with him. I told him I never touched liquor and I never talked to strangers. Then he shoved me against the wall real angry like, grabbed my shoulder and cut it with his ring. You really fought with him, didn't you? I don't remember. I guess I must have grabbed his gun from his holster and shot him. Three times, Miss April. We're not holding your act against you. Not in any of the three months that I've been here in Denver has anyone so much as looked at me. I wouldn't go as far as to say that. You're a mighty pretty girl. I guess I've been too busy being bookkeeper for Mr. McCready to notice any gentleman's glances. Yes, ma'am. Well, here's the things. How are you, Miss April? Just fine, Mr. Romack. Good. Well, I asked around. Nobody seems to have seen the fellow before. Can't have been in town long. Of course, it's getting to be a pretty big town. M. Clarkson. Yeah. May mean anything to you? No, but it looks like he spent a little time around Sacramento. Stable bill, laundry bill. Must be his hometown. Will you gentlemen be wanting me for anything more now? No, that'd be all. George, you want to see Miss April to her room? Sure thing. You will try and find out where he came from. No matter how bad he was, there might be someone who'd want to take care of his remains. That's exactly what we're going to do, ma'am. We're going to wire Sacramento tonight. If he has any friends or kin there, the authorities will locate them for us. Yes, sir. It's a mighty pretty girl. You sure you're going to be all right, ma'am? Perfectly, Mr. Rona. You've been more than kind. Thanks. Good night. It's working like a charm. You didn't think we'd get away with it, did you? Sending you here three months ago. The low bookkeeper, me. Yeah. I told you we'd run into somebody who looked enough like me to make this thing work. I followed him for two days. Well, it's sure good seeing you again, baby. Well, somebody had to come in here and point him out to you. I missed you too, baby. Don't make it worse for us now. I'll be in Golden City at the Crown Hotel. Room 201. I'll be leaving here tomorrow. With the money. With the money. $5,000, Mr. Smith. You mean to tell me Miss April Fenshaw will get $5,000 reward for this gentleman? You can read the telegram, Mr. Gratch. Sacramento Police. M. Clarkson, known as Dakota Jackson. Physical description, including ring, watch, and age, makes positive identification. Why, he's wanted for three bank robberies and a train holdup. Didn't you have a wanted poster on him? I had one. No picture. Miss April will be a rich woman, won't she? Well, let's say comfortable. Sup meeting on you, Smitty? Did you notice Mr. Dakota Jackson's hands? Well, what about them? Well, he must only have worn that ring of his after sundown. Well, how do you figure that? A man wears a ring for any length of time. It leaves a little white circle on his finger when he takes it off. And you don't get calloused hands from robbing banks. 
Well, he probably ain't been robbing any banks for some time. Probably hiding out in some mine. Look, it's happened before. It's an open and shut case. No angles. Where would you look? Is there anything else, gentlemen? No, that'd be all. Come on, snap out of it. Let's go tell April the good news. Yeah, you might as well. Come on. Hold on there, hold on now. Now can't everybody crowd in here? Come on. Let the little lady catch her breath. Thank you kindly, Mr. McCready. With all this work of yours I should be doing. I just don't know what to say. There ain't nothing you have to say, Miss April. Just be the girl hero of Denver in silence, man. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I honestly and truly can't believe it. When's the money coming? It should be here by noon. Chief Richards has wired for verification and we'll be able to issue the reward to the Denver City Bank. What are you going to do with the money, Miss April? I don't really know. I haven't thought about it. I have a sister in St. Louis that I could help. And after this shock and all, I could use a nice long vacation. Um, well, yes, I guess I can give an employee of mine a vacation. Such an honored employee. Then I can leave tonight for St. Louis? Indeed you can, my dear. As a matter of fact, you're taking the rest of the day off right now to get ready. And I'll bring back pretty dresses and, and high heel shoes with curl buttons. And I might even find a bow, Mr. Smith. I'm sure you will. I guess my papa was right. He said hope is always immortal. Yes, ma'am. Just don't leave without all that money. <laughs> You're joshing me, aren't you, Mr. Romack? Now, there's a cute little package, Smitty. You know, Edie and I often wonder why you haven't found a good little gal like that. What's bothering you now? A lot of things. What things? Name me one. Dead man. All right. First of all, we've got a dead outlaw who never did a day's work in his life. Yet his hands are all rough and callous. Number two, there's a ring. It looks as though it's been worn for years. Yet it didn't leave a white circle on the man's finger. Number three, we're asked to believe the dead man was Dakota Jackson. Probably one of the fastest guns in the Southwest, yet a pretty girl has no trouble gunning him down. And that's why Smitty sent all the men out. When we couldn't find you, that is. But that wire from Sacramento absolutely identified the dead man as Jackson, didn't it? Yes, it did, but... And yet you took every man off the force and sent him out to check every rooming house and livery stable in Denver. I thought that was the best way to get some results. Look, Chief. That man that was killed didn't come into town on the stage. We checked at the office. So he must have ridden in. That means he must have a horse someplace. Besides, Smitty figures he rented a room somewhere. All we have to do now is find a room and house where a guy rented a room and didn't show up last night. Simple. Have you any idea how many rooming houses there are in the city of Denver? Well, don't yell at me. I'm just his partner. He's the one who's always so dang suspicious. That's our job, isn't it? To be sure? A total of eight men on the force. A whole town to be patrolled, and they're pulled off their jobs just... All right. All right, you can have the men. But for two hours, no more. I knew we'd see it our way. The chief didn't like it. But my decision to use all the men of the department at once on the case brought the quick results that could have been gotten no other way. An hour or so later, Officer McGowan arrived with an old codger in tow. Hey, Mac. Hi, Smitty. This is Mr. Pepperson. Detective Smith and Romack. Howdy. How are you, sir? Is that on that job you gave us, Smitty? I met Mr. Pepperson here at a rooming house over on 6th Street. He showed up there looking for his partner, a man named Johnny Corrigan. So? That's what I want to know. This feller here, he gets all excited when the landlady says that Johnny didn't come back to his room to sleep last night. <laughs> Oh, shit. If you fellas knew young Johnny like I do. <laughs> Descriptions match? To a T. How oh, listen, what's going on here? What's all the fussy? Mr. Pepson, you mind telling me what you do? I'm a miner, mister. With a claim over in the Platte country. And Johnny Corrigan is my partner. And if Johnny wants to have himself a time when he gets into town, it ain't no never mind to the police. 
That's right, Mr. Pepperson, except... Landlady, say anything else? Nothing, Smitty. I took him to all the livery stables between here and the rooming house looking for Corrigan's horse. We found the animal at Sam's. At the stable behind the hotel? That's right. Riley, the hostler over there, says the man in last night's fracas owned the animal. Now, look, I'm asking you fellas just once more. Now, what's going on here? And where's Corrigan? I think we'd better go to the livery stable and have a little chat with Riley. You stick here, Mike. Hello, Mr. Smith. Hi, Riley. That's him. Yes, that should belong to the fellow that was killed last night. Are you sure? The one Mr. April shot? Well, sure, I'm sure. When I seen him laying in the alley, I said, I'm going to have to sell the horse to pay for that feed bill. You fellers trying to say Corrigan's dead? We're not sure, Mr. Pepperson, but we'll find out. You mean maybe Miss April shot the wrong man? There ain't going to be no reward. Reward? What reward? Johnny Corrigan never did a wrong thing in his whole life. He was like a son to me. A fine, honest boy. Something's cockeyed here, Smitty. Well, we've been thinking there was. Mr. Smith, can I sell the horse or can't I? Better hang on to him for a while, Riley. I'll let you know. Come along, Mr. Peverson. Let's take a little walk over to the funeral parlor. Better get Richard's joint. Yep. Yeah. That's Corrigan, all right. Or my name ain't Billy Pepperson. You sure? Take a look. He's got a knife scar on his right wrist. I ain't crazy. You live with a man ten years, you know what he looks like. Uh, you got the wrong name on that man in the coffin, mister. He's right. The scar's there. Let's change his things a little. I told you. And he wouldn't attack no woman, either. I know better than that. Somebody lied to you, mister. I heard you were here. Anything I can do? No, Mr. Gratz, just a little more identifying. Nothing to worry about. Now, nobody else knows anything about this but us. You want your partner's death solved, don't you? I'd give my store teeth to... Then keep your mouth shut about the mistaken identity. As far as you're concerned, there's still Dakota Jackson back there till we tell you otherwise. Now, look, you can go back over to the stable and tell Riley you made a mistake. Go ahead and let Corrigan's horse be sold. And you just sit tight till we tell you otherwise. Uh, nothing wrong, is there, gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Everything's just dandy. I'll take care of that. Yes, sir. I'll take care of that right away. Looks like our Miss Fenshaw isn't such a sweet little bookkeeper after all. Dakota Jackson's identification must have been placed on Corrigan after he was killed. You buy that? Right. I still can't believe that girl lied to us, Smitty. No? Well, she said she was hit with that ring there. How could she get hit with it when the man didn't have it on until after he was killed? You sure she didn't swing this alone? Eh, Dakota had to have been with her. Where'd the ring and the watch come from? She didn't have a purse. Who carried away Corrigan's possessions? Or what someone will do for $5,000. No, it was for more than that, George. It was real smart. Jackson not only placed himself in a pauper's grave so the law had stopped looking for him, but he had the audacity to let his lady love collect a reward for his death. Well, how do you want to handle this? Well, I don't figure Dakota's in town. Not as she's leaving tonight. They'll probably meet someplace. George and I'd better follow her. Now, you don't have to make a speech, Miss April. We just hope this money brings you a lot of things that this moment, I'm sure you don't anticipate. Yeah, well... Uh... Hey, looky here. So, Riley, help the little lady with her thing. Don't stand there like a jaybird. <laughs> now, you, you watch out for that money, Miss April. Guard it with your life. I'll be sure and take your advice, Mr. McCree. Thank you all. Thank you for everything. <laughs> George, give me 
have a long ride before that little bird lights on a limb. Just put them over there in the bag, Mr. Riley. Yes, sir. Uh, had a scare this morning about you getting that reward money, Miss April. What kind of a scare, Mr. Riley? Well, this fellow coming into town got his eye on a horse that I just sold. He claimed to belong to his partner, whom he couldn't find. Well, for a minute, we all thought that the man you shot was a fellow that was missing and you hadn't killed Dakota Jackson at all. Who thought that, Mr. Riley? Uh, Mr. Smith, Mr. Romack. And they all went over to the funeral parlor to straighten things out. Straighten what out? Oh, it was all cleared up finally. The fellow Pepperson come back, said it was all a mistake, that the man in the coffin wasn't the one they was looking for at all. <laughs> uh, funny thing, though. He told me to forget the whole business, to say nothing to nobody. Now, why do you suppose he'd say a thing like that? Maybe he had a reason. Well, what kind of reason? Maybe he wanted to play a trick on us. And Mr. Smith was in on it, too, and that's why no one said anything to me about it. Uh, maybe. But you got the reward, Marty. That's all that counts. <laughs> Is there anything else I can do for you, Mum? You've done more than enough, Mr. Riley. All right. Good day, Mum. Luggage. Let me know if you have room for it. Deliver Crown Hotel, James Brown. That'll be 420. Didn't know you knew anyone in Golden City. Just a distant cousin. I wanted to tell him of my good fortune. That will get there before the stage, won't it? It'll be there in about an hour. Yeah. And good luck to you, Miss April. I'd like to go into your office a moment. Could we be alone? Sit down. Gentlemen, I've lied to you. The man who was shot the other night wasn't Dakota Jackson. Oh, wait a minute. Let me finish. Dakota's been my husband for six years. He sent me to this town to fool everyone. And I did. Against my principles. I had no alternative. I was afraid for my life. But the man you shot him... Dakota shot him and forced me to run for help. He's been watching me ever since, till the reward money was delivered today. He took every bit of it from me. Where is he now? He's gone. Why didn't you say something about this earlier? I was scared. But I've grown to love this town and respect the people here. I can't go on fooling them any longer. I know Dakota would kill me if he knew I talked. But I'd like to help you catch him. That's the right nice speech, ma'am. I'm sure the judge will allow it in your favor. I mean it, Mr. Smith. If I have to go to jail, it'll be with the conscience that I did it to preserve my own life. As I said before, I'm scared of Dakota. But I want you to catch him. Where is he now, Miss April? I was to meet him tonight at the Crown Hotel in Golden City. He has the money? I can help you clear the way. He won't suspect me. All right. You'll see that you'll be quite safe. You stay in your room till the stage arrives. Mr. Romack will see that nothing happens to you. You won't tell anyone about this, will you? No. No, we wouldn't want any word to get back to Mr. Jackson. But you will be careful, both of you. 
Yes, ma'am. We're always careful. Going away they gave me. It's going to be real sad having to go back and tell them all the truth about me. Yes, ma'am. wasn't in 204. A couple of things. Number one, she hasn't told us the truth since this whole thing started. Two, and I checked the desk on the way in, the key to 204 was in the box. A man waiting for a pretty girl wouldn't go off and forget his key, would he? I wouldn't. Thank you. 